Hello YouTube, Sandre here. So you've heard all of these uh, claims regarding these bushfires uh, raging in Australia, you know, and you, you've heard people like Paul Joseph Watson or uh, Avi Yemeni, which is this guy here. Uh, you've heard them say a bunch of <laughs> really inaccurate things, um, you know, arguing that the news coverage of Australia is a bunch of fake news, and ironically they themselves spread, you know, so-called fake news by lying about the whole thing. And don't get me wrong, folks, I I do believe that they are lying. I do not believe that they are this ignorant, okay? I mean, maybe Avi Yemeni, I, I don't know, the guy seems like he's not the sharpest tool in the shed, to be honest. But regardless, I'm gonna respond to him now, and um, yeah, let's, let's go. Holy crap. Have you guys seen the photos and maps of Australia burning posted everywhere online? Like this one shared by one of those scientists they keep telling us about. Hello, my name is Kyle Hill and I am a science educator with one goal. Help you nerd out with science. <laughs> or this one by the gatekeepers of what constitutes real news. Or this one that celebrities around the world are sharing. They are pretty bloody scary if I don't say so myself. But there's a slight problem. They're all 100% fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No shit, they're fake. Like, what the fuck, man? Are you stupid? Actually, no. Don't, don't answer that question. We all know the answer already. Of course you're stupid. Um, but no, of, of course they're fake. Of course they're not actually real. Who thinks these are real? They're obviously fake. Okay? No, see, the purpose of them is not to give, like, a literal impression of what's actually going on down there, but to show the average location where it, there's a fire, okay? It's supposed to be an infographic, you know, uh, basically showing you roughly where the fires are. It's not supposed to be 100% fucking accurate, you fucking dummy! Oh my god. No shit it's photoshopped. No shit it's not real. Like, god damn! I mean, if you are genuine and not just, you know, purposefully dishonest here, uh, God, you must have been dropped as a baby. I'm, I'm just saying. If any of these maps were real, where I'm standing right now, filming this video, it would be on fire. It's not just fake maps that are doing the rounds. This photo keeps popping up in my Twitter feed too. Now, this one's actually not fake, but it's not from this year's bushfire season either. This photo was actually captured in the 2013 Tasmanian bushfire. You know, because we in Australia have a bushfire season every single year. There are others... Yeah, see, here's the thing. I, I don't like this sort of thing either, and and if you're annoyed by about that, I, I understand. Um, it's kind of like when, uh, you know, there, there was this big uh, hullabaloo uh, last year uh, regarding uh, the detention centers for uh, illegal immigrants, and there was this image uh, floating around uh, supposedly showing one of the detention centers um, during President Trump's... Uh, uh, you know, uh, term um, during 2019, but it, it turns out that that photo was actually from uh, when Obama was president. I think it was like 2015, 2016, maybe something like that. Um, so yeah, look, I, I get it. It's annoying when you see these photos floating around and they're not even from the right, you know, fucking time period uh, or location. So I, I get it. I get it. But um, what does that have to do with the validity of the bushfires? <laughs> like, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I, I understand you being annoyed that people don't understand how to fucking just back search an image on Google. But what does that have to do with the bushfires themselves? I'm, I'm just saying, like, there's plenty of other photos that are similar that show the actual fire from the present. So I, I yeah I don't I don't see what point this is supposed to be. It seems like a red herring to me. It's like this one doing the rounds too. But to be honest, I have no idea how people fall for such poorly photoshopped. Things. Well, no shit. Like I, yeah, I, yeah. How how can anyone fall for this? I mean yeah, of course it's fake. It's obviously fake. But so what? Like I, what is? I don't think I don't think anyone made this to try and fool anyone. I think this is just supposed to be like one of those um, metaphorical images or whatever the fuck you want to call it. But I don't think anyone made this to try and make it, you know, make people believe that it's real. It's obviously fucking photoshopped. 
all right? You, you can clearly tell that, like, the outline of the girl and the koala just doesn't fit the background. The lighting is all wrong as well, so... Yeah, um... No, I, I, I uh, no. I, I don't see why you're upset. Like, who thinks this is real? That's, that's what I'm wondering. Who, who thinks this is real? But it begs the question, why? Why all this fake content when the reality is bad enough? Well, it depends on who you ask. The reality isn't bad enough to those whose message is we only have 10 years left until the world burns down. Because the truth is, there is no empirical evidence that climate change either started or intensified this year's fires. I know what you think. If it... Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Alright, so, so here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Does climate change start a fire? No. No. Climate change is, is, is not some kind of fucking entity that, that, that can just fucking light a match or some shit and just start a fucking fire. No, you have local weather events starting the fire, okay? Some fires, you know, happen because of human stupidity. Some even intentionally set fires and whatever. Other times, uh, a lightning strikes and a fire starts that way, okay? Um, so you, you have a local weather event, regardless, that gives rise to these fires in some capacity. Uh, but climate change, however, it, it's a global phenomena, okay? And so it's very hard to extrapolate anything local to climate, uh, climate change, uh, which is a global phenomena. However, it doesn't mean, though, that climate change doesn't make the circumstances for fires to start easier. It doesn't mean either that climate change does not make it so these fires can last longer and reach a, a, a bigger area. In fact, that is what we are seeing. We are seeing that climate change, on average, means that more forest fires can be started, more bushfires can be started, and they can last longer. Do you know why? Because there's something called a drought, you fucking dummy. Do you know what climate change is, okay? The climate changing, which means that weather patterns change, okay? With climate change, you get changes in rainfall. You also get changes in average temperature, meaning that the circumstances for these fires to start are easier. It also means that the fires can last longer and travel further. What part of this do you not understand? My God, this is this is basic fucking shit. If it wasn't a hundred percent climate change, why the heck did this year's bushfires burn through millions of hectares of land? So I hate to break it to you. There are three compounding factors which together logically explain this year's devastation based on fact, not climate change theory. The first one. This year, a natural weather phenomenon known as the Indian Ocean Dipole has caused a hot, dry spell across Australia, making the bush super flammable. Secondly, the Well, I have to give you some credit. At least you know how to say dipole, unlike Paul Joseph Watson. Droughts in the affected regions were caused by a natural weather phenomenon, the Indian Ocean Dipole, not by man-made climate change. Dipole, dipole, dipole. <laughs> it's just dipole. Who thinks... It's supposed to be pronounced Dipole. Like, if you need any more evidence that Paul Joseph Watson doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, or is obviously lying, then, yeah, just just take that as an example. Dipole. Dipole. Who, f who the fuck looks at this and thinks you're supposed to, di you know, pronounce it Dipole? It's obviously Dipole. Just like the water molecule is a Dipole. D did you not learn this in, you know, fucking science class? In middle school, this word dipole. I mean, goddamn, it's it's so it's so dumb. Dipole meaning two poles. <sighs> Whatever. Um, and and yeah, look, this weather phenomena, it does impact the circumstances. Sure, this is important to keep in mind. I'm not denying that this plays a role as well. However, even if it plays a role, it's not as big as you think, bub. Fuel load on the ground due to lack of hazard reduction. Third, the 183 people charged with starting the bloody things in New South Wales alone. The Indian Ocean Dipole... Uh, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to debunk th this later on. Let me be clear, it is not climate change. It's always happened. And guess what? The last time it happened, it was right before our last devastating bushfires, Black Saturday, in 2009, that killed 173 people. 
So what? What's your point? Oh, you, you, you don't have one. You just want this to be a diversion, okay? You just want to throw this out there and, and hope that, oh, a similar event in the past is somehow going to nullify this whole thing. No, listen up. I'm sick and tired of people trying to use previous extremes. They cherry pick these extremes before and try to use them as an argument that, oh, just because this has happened before, now that it's happening, it's, it's not an issue, okay? It, it's just normal. Well, I'm sorry, but there's nothing normal about what's going on in Australia right now, okay? If you look at this graph here, you'll, you'll see that the average rainfall in the area of Australia that's the most affected has decreased noticeably since the 1960s. You don't think this has an impact, huh? Just because you have an extreme event in 1982, that doesn't mean that climate change did not impact this event that is happening right now. In fact, climate change impacted the one that's before most probably as well. You see, the, the reason that scientists are confident that climate change is a thing is not because these events happen in of themselves, but it's the trend. You have more of these events happening more frequently than ever before. And that is what matters. Anyone can find any kind of extreme event in any place of the world. But that doesn't mean that you should disregard the trend. I, again, this is basic stuff. I, I shouldn't even have to explain this to people, but I, I guess people need this to be explained to them somehow. But I bet you that fact hasn't been reported anywhere in the mainstream coverage that you've seen. I wonder why. Hazard reduction. You're probably asking, is it really green policy to blame? Well, if you ask them, nah, no way. The newly updated bushfires hazard reduction and backburning policy tells us that the Australian Greens support hazard reduction burns and backburning to reduce the impact of bushfires when guided by the best scientific, ecological and emergency services expertise. Yeah, th that's how it works, you dummy. And no, I'm sick and tired of this lie now that the Greens in Australia have been against, you know, uh, backburning and other preventative measures uh, against, uh, you know, bushfires. It's not true. Th there, there is no evidence that they've been against this. No one has been able to provide any evidence whatsoever that they are against this at all. At all. Newsflash, dummy, they're not. That is, what's the word again? Fake news. Ah, yes. Fake news. That's it. But anyway, moving on. Why do you have a problem with them basically getting the, the opinion of scientists and experts in the area? I mean, I, I, what kind of mental gymnastics don't you have to make to think that this is in any way nefarious? I mean, what, what the fuck, man? This is how it's supposed to work, you know? You're supposed to listen to experts. So what does that actually mean? When they refer to the best scientific experts, they're referring to people like this guy, who confirmed their apocalyptic climate change theory. You won't see any- <laughs> Dude, Kyle is honest about the fact that he's not a scientist. He's a science educator, or I would rather call him a science edutainer, to be honest. But yeah, he has a background in physics, but he's honest about the fact that he's not a scientist, and, and he's not, okay? And you presenting this guy as though he's some kind of scientist is really fucking dishonest. He's not. Scientists that disagree. They're ecological experts. They're the ones that tell them what trees cannot be cut down due to reasons such as protecting animal habitats, or a tree is too old. Or yes, because we should just uh, do away with, uh, with uh, ecological restrictions, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, I, I'm, I'm going to come back to this point at the end of this video. There's some bug that lives inside of it that may go extinct and so on. You get the point. These reasons make it illegal for landowners to create fire breaks on their property, allowing the fires to spread. Again, the Greens... Not true. This is not true. I mean, you know, you, you can simply look at the law and you will find that that's not the case. How does national environmental law apply to bushfire prevention activities? The state and territory governments have primary responsibility for care and management of the environment. National environmental law does not generally regulate fire prevention measures taken by state and territory governments and only applies in limited circumstances. Fire prevention activities only need federal en environmental approval if they are likely to have a significant impact on a nationally protected manner and they are not specifically exempted by the national ex environment law. 
what fire prevention activities are not likely to be significant. National environmental law is not about regulating day-to-day -day land management. Fire prevention activities that are unlikely to require approval by the federal government may include routine fuel reduction burns, hmm, including roadside burns done in accordance with state or territory law requirements, routine maintenance of fence lines, access roads, and whatever. Well, how about that? How about that? That's interesting, because, I mean, you, you just said that uh, you're not allowed to do this, but this is actually, in, you know, exempted. As long as you're not trying to create, like, a ridiculously big fire break or anything, which does require the presence of experts to be handled safely, uh, no, you, you don't need a fucking permission from the government even. Like, this is... Do people not know how to do research anymore? I, 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 God, I... I just don't know what the fuck is up with people these days. Let's see here. What fire prevention activities might need to be referred for approval? Constructing substantial new fire breaks, asset protection zones, access roads or tracks on a significant scale, and habitat for nationally threatened species or areas that form a part of a nationally threatened ecological community. One-off fuel reduction burns in remnant forest that is important habitat for nationally threatened species and has not been previously subject to burning regimes. Proposed new burning re regimes in world heritage sites, national heritage places, or Ramsar wetlands. Trial or experimental ecological burns on a significant scale in habitat for nationally threatened species or areas that form part of a nationally threatened ecological community. One-off burns in listed or high habitat value ecological communities that are not fire tolerant, for example, literal rainforests and wet a sclerophyll uh, forest, burning that may cause substantive indirect downstream damage to nationally protective manors as a result of post-fire erosion, for example, water quality within a Ramsar wetland. Obviously, all of this is totally unreasonable. I mean, how dare the government demand that you get approval first before you start burning shit in a protected rainforest? I mean, God, th the gall of the government. I mean, God. Can't a guy just fucking live? You know? And they demand that you get a permit if you're gonna burn something close to a World Heritage Site? I mean, come on! I mean, obviously, the Australians need to go 1776 against their authoritarian government, right? I mean, this is totally, totally fucking authoritarian and shit. No, you fucking dummy. This is reasonable, okay? I am so goddamn sick and tired of people making these lies about how homeowners are apparently not allowed to do controlled burnings to reduce the risk of your homes burning down in bushfires. It's horrible, I tell you. It's like, shut the fuck up. The, laws, it, <laughs> the law is right here. Oh my God. Eco-policy is to put the trees, the ones that get burnt down in bushfires anyway, and animal homes, the same animals who got killed in these fires before the safety of humans. And if by some miracle your property doesn't include any protected trees, the, pro the process to get the permit takes years. And when the Greens use... I literally just showed how this is not true. ...emergency service experts to justify their actions. They pick and choose specific quotes from a select few people, like this one from a retired fire and rescue commissioner. This quote making it seem like it's impossible to do hazard reduction due to weather. Right, buddy. Here's the thing, bub. What does it matter if he's retired? I mean, he probably has a shitload of experience. Experience that you do not have. You ignorant little shit. You arrogant, ignorant little shit. Do you know the mechanics of a bushfire? No? Then shut the fuck up and listen to an actual expert. Part of that quote is that hazard reduction can be done with a bulldozer 365 days a year. But if it's illegal to cut down a tree because some nutcase is against it, then nothing else matters. <laughs> Gee, uh, you know, if, if it was that simple, don't you think people would do this all the time? I, I, apparently, all you need is a bulldozer. <laughs> wow, uh, this is this is pure entertainment at this point. Wow, you you heard it here, folks. All all you need to prevent a forest fire is a bulldozer. N nothing else. No, no, no. No, <laughs> because that's, that's, that's totally, totally legitimate. Wow. Wow, the, the arrogance of this guy. God damn. 
And finally, regarding the third factor, the arsonists. If you ask the Greens, they'll tell you we've always had arsonists in Australia, which is true. But the almost 200 people facing charges in New South Wales alone tell us we have an arson emergency on our hands. Same conclusion, climate change may be real. I don't know, and no one really knows, no matter how emotional the argument is. Um, no, it's, it's real, buddy. Um, <laughs> we see the average temperature increasing in line with increasing concentrations of CO2 and other greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. So it's real, bub. You can keep on, you know, closing your eyes and holding your hands for your ears and saying la 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 la, I can't hear you, while you call everyone else a fucking sheep. But guess what, buddy? You're the sheep. And not only that, you're an arrogant, ignorant little sheep too. But anyway, when it comes to these claims, first of all, let, let's let's uh, take a look at the efficacy of uh, these uh, controlled uh, reduction fires or backfires. So this is uh, bushfires. Is fuel reduction burning the answer? And this is an official report uh, drafted by the government of Australia. So this is the official explanation as to when you can do a backfire safely and when you cannot do them, okay? So let's take a look here. Opportunity to carry out fuel reduction burning. There are a number of factors which decide the timing of fuel reduction burning, the weather being the most significant one. Fuel loads need to be dry enough to be effectively carry out hazard reduction burning without the conditions being so severe that the burn risks getting out of control. Fuel reduction burning normally takes place in spring and autumn. In Western Australia, most of the burning is carried out in spring, while in New South Wales, it occurs in autumn. There's normally an opportunity for a fuel reduction burning program to be carried out if the land manager has allocated adequate planning and resources to the program. Here's the thing though, it's dry. Okay, Australia is dry right now. The season where they could do reduction burning or backfire burning, the window has decreased over the years. Every year now, on average, they've noticed that the window where they can do these burnings safely have decreased, which is why you haven't had as many reduction burnings the last few years as you had like 20 years ago. Environmental effects. Burning regimes, including total exclusion of fire, will have a significant impact on the species composition of a forest ecosystem. While no species of sclerophyllous vegetation has been made extinct as a direct result of burning, some plant species have been eliminated from local areas due to frequent burning, whether by wildfire or prescribed burning or both. Frequent low-intensity burning will alter the composition of the understory plant species in dry sclerophyll forests, even if no species is lost. Some plant species require high-intensity fire to regenerate. So, here's another thing about these uh, backfires. Um, they are destructive. Now, don't get me wrong, they can be a good idea to prevent, you know, bigger fires in the future, but whenever you do these backfires, you have a destructive impact on the local, you know, ecosystem. And so you have to pick where it's worthwhile to do these fires as well, not just because of, you know, the dryness and whatever, but also because if you do a uh, back burning during uh, a time of the year where the conditions are not right and you're doing it in a, in a very sensitive area, you may actually cause damages to the ecosystem. Escapes of burns. Any fuel reduction burning operation runs the risk of escaping control and causing a bushfire. This is why fuel moisture, weather conditions, control lines and ignition points must be carefully considered. Such escapes can and do occur under the supervision of both government and private land managers and can cause significant environmental and economic damage. In April of 2002, 10,000 hectares of Wiperfeld National Park were damaged when a controlled burn escaped the containment lines of the Victorian Department of Natural Resources and Environment. And guess what, bub? The last few years, especially this year, especially 2019 and 2020, it's been drier than usual in most of Australia, meaning that even a backfire burning or a fuel control burning can lead to the fire getting out of, out of control, which has happened in the past, and that's why you haven't had as many as previous years. So stop lying by saying that, oh, the bushfires this year were created just because we didn't do that many reduction burns and the reduction burns weren't made because the greens were in the way, and that's not true, okay? The reason they didn't do as many burns is because if they did, 
They might have caused that fucking bushfire that is raging right now. You need the right conditions to do this safely. Otherwise, it may go out of control and have unintended consequences, or it may damage the local ecosystem, which I don't know if you notice in Australia can be very fragile. Oh, and when it comes to the supposedly 200 people being charged with arson, um, this is a news release from New South Wales Police Force on January 6, 2020. What the release actually says is that legal action was taken against 103 people since November 8, 2019 for fire-related offenses, including things like improperly discarding cigarettes or not taking enough precautions around machinery. In other words, not arson. Legal action ranges from caution through to criminal charges, according to New South Wales Police. So not everyone is being charged with a crime, and not all of these penalties are for incidents linked to wildfires. And it later turns out that only about 24 people out of these about 200 are actually facing any criminal charges for deliberately igniting fires in New South Wales. And even fewer than those 24 actually managed to succeed in starting a fire. So no, you don't have almost 200 pyromaniacs setting all these fires. This is demonstrably not true. Stop making this claim, you fucking liars. What you have is actually 24 people who tried to start a fire and even fewer who actually succeeded. And here's the thing. There have been thousands of these fires burning all over Australia ever since September. And they've been burning in an area that is larger than West Virginia. Yeah, that's how big it is. And most of these fires, and many of these fires, have been burning in very remote and hardly populated areas. So this is obviously not the work of a couple of pyromaniacs. That is not why you have these grand fires raging right now. So no, at the end of the day, one of the reasons why you have such grand fires going on right now in Australia is because of climate change. And you, sir, are either a dunce or a fucking liar. Anyway, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try and have that Greta video uh, done as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, take care, guys. Bye.